Hello and welcome back to the show. We've got a fun one to look at today with Jose Chung's From Outer Space. That's Jose Chung because you'd have to be a real jackass to say Jose. Clyde Bruckman's Final Repose and Jose Chung's From Outer Space being standouts. Oh, son of a bitch. Anyways, Jose Chung debuted April 12, 1996 and follows Scully as she helps eccentric author Jose Chung write his latest book about alien abduction. The episode begins and this is already better than anything Star Wars has done the past 30 years. Young Chrissy and Harold are on their first date and Harold makes the rookie move of telling her he loves her. Before she can laugh in his face, his car comes to a dead stop, which is never a good thing when you're in the middle of nowhere. What happened? I don't know why these two are so freaked out. They're just terrifying spacemen from beyond the moon. Oh, Jesus Christ. Before Chrissy and Harold get probed, a much larger alien that seems to move at 12 frames per second arrives and he looks pissed. We then catch up with Scully, who's speaking to the man of the hour, a Mr. Jose Chung. He's there for insight on alien abduction and what have you, but Mulder, feeling like he would have been made a mockery of, refuses to be involved, leaving our poor dear Scully to take the reins, but she is a fan of Jose Chung's work, so I don't think she'll have any issue helping. What made you decide to write a book on an alien abduction if you're not that interested in the subject matter? Money. Chung has been speaking to many different people about what really happened to those kids and he's just here to probe Scully's mind for her version of what she believes to be the truth. She recalled nothing of the previous night nor how she had arrived at her present whereabouts. While Mulder thinks young Chrissy to be the victim of some kind of alien encounter, Scully on the other hand sees her as a victim of date Although Chrissy is seeing aliens just about everywhere, so I don't know if Scully's take on the case is all that accurate. Harold makes the very unwise decision of trying to speak to Chrissy because she thinks he hurt her and her father, he's got a shotgun. We were abducted by aliens. You don't sound so sure. Harold was picked up by the police a little after his little excursion to Chrissy's house and he's adamant that they were taken by aliens. He even passes a lie detector test, not that those things actually work because they don't. When Mulder and Scully get involved however, his story changes, not because he believes it, but because no one believes him. Because the next rape you experience will probably be your own, in prison. You know Mulder generally doesn't speak like this, but this is Scully's recounting of the events. Chrissy is brought in for questioning as well, and Mulder thinks she's suffering from post-abduction syndrome, while Scully gives one of her best eye rolls yet. Chrissy is put through hypnosis regression therapy and recalls herself being face to face with some aliens, while they do God knows what to her and Harold. It's like he's inside my mind, like he's stealing my memories. Detective Manners comes in giving Mulder an earful because he thinks Mulder just messed up the entire case for him. You still gonna hold the boy? Oh, you bet your blankety blank bleep I am. Now this is Scully's retelling, so she helps up by cleaning the language a bit. Harold continues with his story of their harrowing alien encounter, but these aliens seem harmless. The funniest part is when Harold tells Chrissy he won't let anything happen to her, she's immediately taken by a much larger alien while he screams in a corner. Harold is taken next, but is then suddenly back on the ground, so he makes a beeline for Chrissy's place. Scully has had enough playing around and wants to know if what he and Chrissy did was consensual or not. Harold says it was, but he doesn't want her father finding out because, well, shotgun. I just got a call from some crazy bleephead claiming he was an eyewitness to this alien abduction. You feel like talking to this blank hole? A lineman Rocky that was out on the road the night the kids were taken claims he saw what happened and spent the next 48 hours writing it down. In great detail, every single thing he saw. The reason why he was afraid to bring it forward was because he was visited by what he claims to be the Men in Black. And no, not the fun Will Smith Men in Black, the scary I ain't got time to bleed Men in Black. You're bleeding man, I ain't got time to bleed. The Man in Black threatens Rocky, telling him what he saw was the planet Venus and if he tells anyone he saw anything, then he's a dead man. Be thou not afraid, no harm will come on. Mulder reads over Rocky's papers, and even Mulder, who can believe there's a Jersey Devil based off a of first grader's drawing, has a hard time believing what he's reading. Well, kind of. Mulder, you're nuts. I'm not saying he isn't delusional, I'm just suggesting that his delusional state was triggered by something he actually witnessed that night. 
Mulder doesn't believe all of Rocky's story, but the first part does line up with what Harold said, so Mulder sets up another session for Chrissy to be hypnotized so they can get all three stories to match up, I guess. Her story does line up, kind of, but instead of aliens, it's the Air Force. Chrissy saw something that night, but whatever she saw, the Air Force doesn't want her remembering. Scully thinks Mulder and the hypnotist were leading Chrissy, and I kind of agree. But no time for that, because someone found a dead alien. Jose Chung speaks with Blaine, the man who found the body, and gives his recollection of what happened that night. The only time he reacted was when he saw the dead body. <laughs> yeah, that's a bleeping dead alien body if I ever bleeped and saw one. My favorite part of his version of the events is how Mulder and Scully are the men in black, and it's Scully who threatens his life if he tells anyone what he saw. Scully calls shenanigans because not only did she not threaten him, they also let him watch the autopsy, which I'm not sure is standard procedure. Mulder even lets him record it, and the whole thing basically turns into an alien autopsy parody hosted by the stupendous Yappy. It's not an actual alien though, it's the body of someone disguised as an alien, who really needs a nose clipping. The body is of Major Robert Valley of the United States Air Force. We were notified one of our officers was confined here under your custody. Who notified you? The Air Force comes to pick up their man, but when they enter the room, his body is suddenly gone. The men in black decide to pay Blaine a little visit and steal his tape. Blaine tries to stop him, but gets a nice backbreaker for his troubles. He's then smacked awake by Mulder, who wants to know where the tape is, and then like Scully, threatens his life. On his way back to the motel, Mulder spots another Air Force pilot, but thank God for his high beams or we'd be seeing all of him. He brings Lieutenant Jack Schaefer to a nearby diner where he starts shaping his mashed potatoes into some kind of structure, which is clearly a ripoff of The Simpsons and nothing else. The lieutenant spills the beans on everything, the government's testing of secret military craft and hypnotizing witnesses into thinking they were abducted by aliens. Despite being involved in these things, the lieutenant thinks himself, his co-pilot, and the kids were all abducted by actual aliens. Before he can get any deeper, the Air Force arrives and hauls his ass off. Jose Chung himself actually has a completely different timeline of events from that night. His friend is the cook there, and all he remembered seeing was Mulder come in, sit down, eat an entire sweet potato pie, and ask question after question about UFOs and alien abduction. There was no pilot, no Air Force, so someone's lying. Where's Scully? Oh, she, uh, she went to get some ice. When Mulder gets back to Scully's room, the men in black are there, but I guess she already knew. They tell Mulder most alien encounters are hoaxes perpetrated by the government to discredit truth seekers, and Mulder fires back by saying the same thing can be said about the men in black. You're feeling very sleepy. Scully, for some reason, has no memory of these events, but does remember waking up and finding Mulder asleep in her room. That was Detective Manners. He said they just found your bleeping UFO. The agents head down to this UFO crash, which turns out to just be some experimental aircraft. But isn't that Lieutenant Schaefer? And that Major Valley? Hmm, it's almost like these men were killed as part of a cover-up for what really happened. And that's all there is. Scully's version of the events end there. Later, Mulder visits with Jose Chung, asking him not to write his book, because he thinks it carries with it some kind of agenda. However, since Mulder is unwilling to give his version, the book will be written. After the events that took place, everyone has moved on or found a new purpose. Blaine continues searching for UFOs while enjoying his new job, and I really hope people don't like having power. Rocky starts some kind of a cult. Scully reads Jose's new book, Mulder does something while watching Bigfoot videos. Chrissy becomes an environmentalist, and poor Harold is still in love. Although I think Chrissy moved on because who the hell is this? Jose Chung's From Outer Space is a bizarrely fun episode, and one that's almost hard to make a video on. It's kind of all over the place, and constantly has gags or references that you really need to pay attention to. And when I mean all over the place, I don't mean the episode is a mess, but because you have varying perspectives about what took place, you need to pay attention, otherwise you might miss something. I'm not alone in this either because reportedly, the director Rob Bowman confessed to reading the script roughly 15 times and holding an 8 hour meeting with Darren Morgan to make sure he understood all the intricacies. When I was younger, it took me a long time to actually get around to watching this one. I remember seeing that promo and the alien quickly reaching into the car. That image was burned into my brain for years and scared the hell out of me. 
It wasn't until much later that I finally sat down and watched it, and when I did, I didn't get it. The episode was so weird and I didn't really know what was going on. I think I was also let down because my expectations were all built up because of that promo I remembered seeing as a kid, and while that opening with the alien is creepy, the rest of the episode is very silly. However, as I watched the episode more and more, I came to appreciate what they were going for and it quickly became one of my favorites. I really do love this episode, and it's a shame that this would be the last one Darren would do until the Revival series in 2016. He claimed it was because he couldn't keep up with the pace of the show, but I think it might be more likely that he stuffs each episode with so much that it just led to his eventual burnout. He does come back over a year later for the show Millennium with another Jose Chung focused episode called Jose Chung's Doomsday Defense, which is basically a cleverly disguised jab at Scientology. Jose Chung's From Outer Space was pretty much loved by fans, critics, the cast, and the crew. Jillian thought the episode was one of the highlights of her career when just two episodes prior, she had experienced one of her lowest. Producer Paul Rabwin compared the episode to something like Eye of the Beholder for The Twilight Zone or Trouble with Tribbles from the original Star Trek, an instant classic that when you think of the X-Files, you think of Jose Chung. Darren had come up with a lot of ideas for the episode long before he had even written it. He had read stories about hypnosis and experimental aircraft that could bend space and time itself, but were piloted by US Air Force and not the usual suspects, aliens. Darren loves to stuff his episodes with pop culture references or in-jokes, and we're going to quickly blast through as many as I can without dragging things out. The alien Lord Kimboat, the big gnarly looking guy, was an homage to the late great Ray Harryhausen, who was a master of stop motion animation. Lord Kimboat was a man in costume, but was shot in such a way to give him the jittery appearance of stop motion. The cover for Jose Chung's From Outer Space is a direct reference to Whitley Strieber's book Communion, which details his experiences with extraterrestrials. The dead pilot in the alien costume, Major Robert Valley, is named after Jacques Valley, a UFO researcher. Blaine the UFO nut is wearing a space above and beyond shirt, which Glenn Morgan and James Wong left the X-Files to create. Rocky the lineman who witnessed the abduction was named after Rocky Erickson, a musician known for writing songs about aliens. Detective Manners was based off director and producer Kim Manners, who liked to use a lot of colorful language behind the scenes. The scene where Lieutenant Schaefer is playing with his potatoes is a direct reference to Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Lieutenant Schaefer was also named after UFO researcher Robert Schaefer. The very opening of the episode is a tribute to the original Star Wars, and I refuse to call it A New Hope, because it's just Star Wars. When Scully is performing the autopsy on the alien, this was a parody of and jab at the fake alien autopsy that Fox put out in 1995. And I think this is the fifth time I've mentioned this in a video, not including the video I made completely dedicated to it. Class County, where the episode mostly takes place, was named after Philip J. Class, a UFO researcher who claimed most UFO sightings were merely the planet Venus, something Jesse Ventura's Man in Black would say to Rocky. But it's been proven he only saw the planet Venus. There's so much to unpack in this episode that you could just go on forever. Jose Chung also boasts a pretty large guest cast made up of mostly unknown actors, but there are a few notable ones I think I should mention. First we have Willick Lucking, who played Rocky, and is probably most well known as Piney Winston from Sons of Anarchy. Unfortunately, he passed away October 18th, 2021, at 80 years old. Next, in a very brief cameo as a man in black, we have Alex Trebek, host of one of the most well-known game shows in the world, Jeopardy. Darren wanted Johnny Cash for the role since he is the man in black, but when he couldn't get him, Alex took the role. We unfortunately also lost Alex back on November 8th, 2020 at 80 years old. As the main man in black, we've got the sexual Tyrannosaurus himself, Jesse Ventura. Darren was a big wrestling fan back in the day and wrote the role specifically for him. In an interview with Playboy magazine, Jesse admitted that he had no idea what his lines meant or what their significance was. And I tried to get his exact quote, but I could not find the article, and I am not paying for a Playboy subscription. Lastly, we have Charles Nelson Riley as Jose Chung himself. Charles was an actor and comedian known for shows like The Ghost and Mrs. Muir, Match Game, and films like All Dogs Go to Heaven. When he was just 13 years old, he survived the 1944 Hartford Circus Fire, which claimed the lives of 167 people and led to him developing a fear of sitting in an audience. Even though he would perform and direct theater shows, he could often be found near the exits while looking at his work. 
Charles would play Jose Chung one more time for the show Millennium, and on May 25th, 2007, Charles would pass away at the age of 76. Jose Chung's From Outer Space currently sits at an 8.9 on IMDb, though I'm leaning more towards a 9 myself. It's a fun episode with a lot of silly moments, but I'm a bit biased when it comes to the sillier episodes. Next we have an episode that I had all but forgotten about, when Skinner finds his one night stand dead and Mulder is the only one who can prove his innocence in the episode Avatar. So what do you think of Jose Chung's From Outer Space? Let me know down in the comments. Well that's all for today folks, I hope the week is treating you alright and please stay spooky. On a lonely road, two young people have a terrifying encounter. What are those things? But that's only the beginning. Where is she? He's stealing my memories. <laughs> you never saw this. What do you want with us? This is not happening. A brand new X-Files Friday at 9, 8 central.